January 26, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 13 from the New Testament. Now there were some present on that occasion who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. He answered them, Do you think these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans, because they suffered these things? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as well. Are those 18 who were killed when the tower in Siloam fell on them? Do you think they were worse offenders than all the others who live in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as well. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the worker who tended the vineyard, For three years now I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and each time I inspect it I find none. Cut it down. Why should it continue to deplete the soil? But the worker answered him, Sir, leave it alone this year too, until I dig around it and put fertilizer on it. Then if it bears fruit next year, very well, but if not, you can cut it down. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And a woman was there who had been disabled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten herself up completely. When Jesus saw her, he called to her and said, Woman, you are freed from your infirmity. Then he placed his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. But the president of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, said to the crowd, There are six days on which work should be done. So come and be healed on those days, and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from its stall and lead it to water? Then shouldn't this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be released from this imprisonment on the Sabbath day? When he said this all, his adversaries were humiliated. But the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things he was doing. Thus Jesus asked, What is the kingdom of God like? To what should I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the wild birds nested in its branches. Again he said, To what should I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour, until all the dough had risen. Then Jesus traveled throughout towns and villages, teaching and making his way toward Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? So he said to them, Exert every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the head of the house gets up and shuts the door, Then you will stand outside and start to knock on the door and beg him, Lord, let us in. But he will answer you, I don't know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know where you come from. Go away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. Then people will come from east and west and from the north and south and take their places at the banquet table in the kingdom of God. But indeed, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. At that time, some Pharisees came up and said to Jesus, Get away from here, because Herod wants to kill you. But he said to them, Go and tell that fox, look, I'm casting out demons and performing healings today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will complete my work. Nevertheless, I must go on my way today and tomorrow and the next day, because it is impossible that a prophet should be killed outside Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who are sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would have none of it. Look, your house is forsaken, and I tell you, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. God, I think in our day and age, we always feel like, oh, 
I'll have tomorrow to take care of that. I'll have tomorrow to work on that. I'll have the future. Right now I need to do these things. And if we're one of those people where we've had people who have been killed or who have died very quickly on us, at that moment, we suddenly realize how fast life can, can be gone. But then we get back into the, to the world and we forget again how fleeting this life truly is. But when I was reading, reading these words in this chapter, especially when you're talking to them about, in answer to their question about, Lord, will only a few be saved? Exert every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. And I went to my commentary I have for, for Luke, and I was reading about what some of the people had been writing about your son's words, and one of them actually wrote this. That there will eventually be a time when the opportunity to trust in Christ will be taken away. And I guess I, of course, always knew that. That seems like kind of common sense. And some of the people listening to me read this may be going, yeah. <laughs> so. But to me, that, that has an urgency. That has an immediacy. That today... We could be done with this earth and all of our choices and all our decisions will be immediately cut off to the point of whatever we have made them. So if we've made a decision to follow you, if we've made a decision to get through that narrow door through asking your son to come in and live in our hearts, asking forgiveness of our sins, accepting you as our Lord and Savior. But what about all the people who haven't? instantly that that choice that we so take for granted will be given will be completely taken away from them something that was a gift that had been given and and opened up to them freely right in front of them and they never took it and they're not able to enter into the kingdom of heaven but i went to church but i read the bible but I said my prayers, and yet you say, I will say, I, I don't even know you. <laughs> In fact, you call them evildoers. So there's an urgency to this that I pray today, God, that everybody understands. There's an urgency to living this life because it can stop right now. It can stop tomorrow. It can stop next week. And it may not stop for us, but it may stop for one of our loved ones. And whatever decision they have made at that point when their life is cut off is the decision of whether that, that narrow passage opens up for them or not. God, I pray today that our hearts will just be on fire, that we will remember that. And not take our time for granted here, that, that our lives are very short and can end at any given time. And our choice to go through that narrow door into your kingdom, that choice of yes or no, was cut off the second that our life was taken away. I just ask that we seek out people today and whatever we're supposed to do, whether we're supposed to talk to them about you, whether we're supposed to give our testimony, whether we're supposed to pray, pray with them, for them. Or if this is a person you're putting in, into our life that we're actually going to spend some time with and get, get to walk with them in growing their relationship with you. Whatever it is that you've called us to do, remind us of that urgency. There's no tomorrow that is promised to us. Remind us of that today. There's an urgency to telling other people about you. There's an urgency to being obedient. There's an urgency to our decision making. Because there will come a time in every single person's life when that choice will be made for them. God, I just thank you today so much for your grace. 
so much for your open arms that are holding out a gift to every single person. You chose us. You chose us to be your children. You chose that we would be saved. You chose for us to spend eternity with you. But you say, we also need to be part of that relationship. We need to accept you as our Lord and Savior. We need to ask for forgiveness of our sins. We need to understand that your son died for those sins and is now spending eternity in heaven with you. And we can join him. We need to understand that that gift is right in front of us. But once our lives are cut short, once our time here on earth is done, that gift expires. The grace and the mercy and the forgiveness that you so freely offer us from the moment we are born is now done. And our choice to open that gift or reject that gift is our decision. It is our final decision. God, I just pray for all the hearts that haven't accepted your gift. I pray for all the people out there that are coasting on taking for granted the time that they do have. I'll get to my relationship with God tomorrow. Right now, I want to live in the world. I don't have time to learn about God. I have other things to do. I can do that when I'm older. Being in a relationship with God is just too much work. I'd rather just do what I want to do right now, and I can do that later. God, I just ask for that urgency to be put on their heart. That there'll come a point where the choice to choose you is no more and I just pray that that urgency kicks in before that choice is taken away from them God I love how in John 15 16 you say you chose us that we didn't choose you but I do know that we have to be a participant in this relationship that you're offering us and I just ask that those hearts be open today to what you have to offer. This amazing gift of eternal life. Unconditional love. Boundless grace and never-ending mercy. I love you so much. Thank you, God. Amen.